I will not put any question on the motion. Debates on motions with no legislative effect. Motion of reviewing the holiday policy. Members who wish to speak, please press the request to speak button. I call upon the Honorable Pun Xiuping to speak and move the motion. Mr. Pun Xiuping. Chairman or President, I move that the motion is printed on the agenda be passed. That the Council urges the government to review the holiday policy and designate the victory day of the Chinese People's War of Resistance against Japanese aggression as a statutory holiday. President. Uh, we've fought against the Japanese for, for eight years. It goes to show the um, spirit of the Chinese um, resistance. The We have contributed greatly to the Second World War. So whether it's the impact on the history, historical development, the uh, we should designate the Victory Day as a statutory holiday. Having this as a statutory holiday doesn't mean that we will go over the hatred of the war. We would not try to create more animosity. So rather, we would have to face up to the evils of the war and that we would, should reflect upon the war. We should know about the precious, uh, how precious life is. Many people have lost their lives during the war. And in Hong Kong today, There has been calls for independence of Hong Kong, so we should um, celebrate or memorize the Victory Day so that the young people in Hong Kong can learn about our Chinese nation once again. For those uh, ancestors who suffered from the war, we should be proud about them, President. In fact, to designate the 3rd of September the Victory Day of the Chinese People's War of Resistance Against Japanese Aggression is not in proposal coming from me alone. After the war has ended, the Chinese government then immediately designated the, 30, the 3rd of September as the Victory Day. In 2015, that was the 17th anniversary of the Victory Day, the CPG uh, declared that the 3rd of September be a holiday uh, so that people could join the various uh, celebration activities all over the country. Uh, back then, the uh, Hong Kong government also um, designated this as a special one of a uh, statutory holiday and general holiday. And well, this uh, proposal is not nothing new. Before the reunification of Hong Kong, the Hong, uh, British Hong Kong government designated the 30th of August as a liberation day. And there was a, a general holiday in August to uh, commemorate the end of the Japanese war. Now, after reunification, since the liberation day carried a colonial favor, so that was canceled. So we uh, did away with the liberation day. But we should not forget history. The Victory Day has a, a greater historical significance than liberation day. So that's why I ask that a designate, to designate the Victory Day as a statutory holiday. President, in 2015, the LegCo scrutinized the special holidays, uh, 2015, 3rd of September bill. That was supported by the LegCo. When I su uh, supported the bill, I also pointed out that an, a more appropriate approach was to designate the Victory Day as a um, standing statutory holiday. Um, the Democratic camp members back then also said expressly that the Victory Day should be designated a statutory holiday so that members of the public can uh, commemorate or remember the history of Victory Day. Now, the, the, the then Secretary for Labor Welfare, the now CS4A, responded in an um, arbitrary way. He didn't say categorically whether he, we should designate the Victory Day as a statutory holiday. At the same time, he said that increasing the number of general holidays and statutory holidays will have long, uh, far-reaching implications, and a careful approach has to be adopted. Consensus has to be uh, reached. 
Regrettably, after the bill was enacted, the government had not uh, tried to seek a common consensus on whether to designate the Victory Day as a statutory holiday. So that's why I'm raising this motion today. I hope that the council can pass the motion I move and we can seek a consensus within the LegCo and tell the public or the government that the Victory Day should be designated as a statutory holiday. President, after I moved the motion, uh, some media and also some peer members asked me why that in my motion, I only asked for the destination of the Victory Day as a statutory holiday. And I didn't mention anything about standardizing general holidays and statutory holidays. Well, as we all know, I have clear stance on the issue. Now, we have a distinction between GH and SH now. There are uh, five fewer statutory holidays than general holidays, and this is unfair. Now, based on whatever reasons in the past, there is a disparity now, and that doesn't meet with the aspirations or the needs of the society. That must be ratified. But I understand that if we have to um, standardize the GH and SH uh, number, that would be an impossible mission. So I would rather than say that seek members from different political parties in the electrical to first designate the Victory Day as a statutory holiday. President, to the business sector, whenever we talk about increasing the number of holidays, they will be concerned about the loss um, as income payment. Uh, the employers should be mindful not only about the increase in costs, but also the positive impact of holidays, uh, day uh, increase. Now, the employees may um, go shop and dine during holidays, and that will bring uh, profits to the relevant sectors and will also drive the further economic growth in the society. And employers, employees, if they have got sufficient rest days, that will do good to their um, health and also work. I hope that the the colleagues will not try to quantify the uh, take a quanti quantitative approach to this issue. Well, because we are talking about the suffering of a nation and the um, growth and the glory of a nation, and this can't be measured in money terms. So last but not least, I hope that fellow members can agree to and support my motion. So I speak, President. I now propose to question to you that the motion moved by Mr. Wen Xiuping be passed. Three members will move amendments to this motion. This council will conduct a joint debate on the motion and the amendments. I'll call upon members who will move the amendments to speak in the following order. Mr. Jonathan Ho, Mr. Andrew Wen, and Dr. Fernando Zhang, but they may not move their amendments at this stage. Mr. Jonathan Ho. Well, there are two types of holidays. I think majority of employees don't know the difference. Perhaps for um, clerical workers or those who employ of em or em households who employ foreign domestic workers, they will know because there are times when they have a holiday, whereas the um, foreign domestic helpers don't have the same ones. In the area where I live, I see that uh, some hardware stores are open, whereas there aren't many people in the street because for blue collar workers, say for example, garages, they still have to work because they enjoy different holidays. So over these few days, over these few days of holidays, we see an unfair situation. That's what mentioned by uh, Mr. Pun Xiuping. For blue collar workers, they only enjoy 12 days of holiday. For white collar workers, those work in banks or civil servants, they have seven days. Because back in 1875, 
the um, public holidays ordinance, they use Bank Holiday uh, Act 1871 of the UK for reference when setting Hong Kong holidays. So these holidays are also called bank holidays. However, times have changed. The uh, Hong Kong government has uh, used different principles to add public holidays, say, for example, uh, festive days or days uh, uh, to commemorate certain events. The number of bank holidays has been increasing. On the 18th of um, November 1997, the 17 days general holidays that we have today was set. Some people from the business sector said that uh, they don't want to align the uh, holiday arrangements or simply by saying that um, uh, the number of holidays should be al should be aligned at um, 12 days. Well, the actual additional cost for the business sector is only 0.2%. That is about $600 million. And in 2001, there was a study report for overall societal cost for an addition for additional holidays from 12 days to 17 days or uh, as Mr. Poon said 18 holidays per day the cost as a whole is about um, 370 million dollars per day well let's uh, give you let me give you some reference for um, traffic diversion uh, of the three tunnels. Uh, there will be a saving of uh, societal costs about $800 million. So using that amount, people can get two additional statutory holidays. Do we, don't ha do we not have the $800 million? Well, if you raise the toll fees, uh, of uh, two tunnels and reduce the toll fees for one tunnel, then you get two more holidays. I, I think people will be very happy. There won't be any traffic congestions uh, on those days. There are about uh, $1.4 million uh, having general holidays and about 30.9% uh, of the employees enjoy only statutory holidays. So for the 30.9% of employees, if they can enjoy general holidays instead of statutory holidays, that means they will have five additional holidays. How big do you think the impact is on society as a whole? There was a search report done by the LegCo. Uh, uh, according to that report, cost is that amount is the maximum uh, level because for people who have additional holidays, they will stay in Hong Kong, they will spend. So businesses will make a bigger profit, which will then offset part of the cost. Well, these figures all came from eight years ago. And over the past eight years, the administration has not made any effort uh, to improve the situation. Mr. Poon's original motion is about the victory day of um, the Chinese People's War of Resistance against uh, Japanese aggression. But we need to change the unfair situation. Times have changed. We have less and less blue collar workers. We have more people working in the service industry. They are being exploited. They work in the back office. They can enjoy general holidays. If they work frontline, then they only have twelve days. They may change their holiday. They may change make changes to the arrangements to allow more employees to enjoy longer rest time. Hong Kong people are working longer hours. Well, the chief executive loves to work for at least ten hours a day. Hong Kong people work longer hours than our neighboring 
cities. I think it's a very good way to improve the holiday situations in Hong Kong. I think the, my view is shared by the chief executives uh, from what she's done in relation to paternity leave and maternity leave. But not all people can enjoy maternity or paternity leave. Oh, because if you are over the age of 40, it's difficult for you to have a baby. So how can we uh, ensure all employees to enjoy the same holidays? Aligning the general holidays with statutory holidays will be a good way. As I've said, that this will encourage people to spend locally, For Easter holidays, blue collar workers don't get a chance to spend and consume. Only white uh, collars can do that. If you talk about family friendly policy, that means you need to give more time for employees to spend with their family. In back in 2017, uh, Bohemia Foundation conducted uh, a study on uh, work-life balance. They have looked into overseas practice, and there are findings saying that if there is no work-life balance, uh, there is serious impact on uh, on the person. It will affect um, the relationship in the family. It will affect their product productivity. It may increase the number of uh, work absent days. So increasing the number of holidays will be a big help. I hope the Secretary will hear what members say and will actually do something. We don't ask for a big jump, but can't you at least do it gradually? to align general holidays with sedentary holidays by bringing the letter to 17 days for employees to spend more time with their families and to spend with their children and parents. I hope to hear from the secretary. Perhaps the secretary will say that Compared to other Asian cities, we already enjoy more holidays. Compared to Taiwan, 29, well, 26 days paid uh, annual leave and the seven, uh, 22 uh, public general holidays and seven um, pay and paid annual leave. Well, that may be the only place that is um, have more holidays than in Hong Kong. Mr. Andrew Wong. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Any measure to benefit employees and raise the living quality of the people is worth supporting, so we would support Mr. Pun Xiuping's motion. Um, he is rather um, conservative in his re request. We do agree that the victory day against Japanese aggression should be designated a holiday. But for most um, members returned from geographical constituencies, they would know that um, there are long-standing calls to standardize the number of the numbers of holidays for employees, and um, it has a rather long history. I would not go back too far in time, and I'm sure the Secretary knows about it very well. According to the current General Holidays Ordinance, and only um, 17 days of um, general holidays is different from the 12 days 
for statutory holidays. So the um, difference of five days is significant for many people. Um, there, uh, this is um, unfair. We always talk about one country, two systems, and at recent times, our um, the president of our nation has been making calls to Taiwan, and even for our holiday regimes, apparently we have two systems. Some people or employees are considered superior and they can enjoy more off days. And I'm sure the Secretary would agree that labor should be respected and laborers should enjoy equal rights. I think um, this goes without saying. And um, in the second quarter of 2011, according to a general household survey conducted by the Census and Statistics Department, nearly 31% of the employees, or 850,000, were only on statutory holidays. So the majority were blue-collar workers on general holidays. So um, on general holidays, everyone could get off work, including um, Good Friday, the day following Good Friday, Buddha's birthday, first the first weekday after Christmas Day, etc. These are occasions for quality family time, but um, the so-called um, blue-collar workers still have to work. Hong Kong has among the longest working hours in the world. We have been talking about standard working hours but it came to nothing. So now we would like to standardize the two sets of holidays. We want to align the number of holidays to 17 or, or 18. Even the former um, Secretary for Labor and Welfare, Matthew Chang, said Hong Kong is doing better than many places. Of course, um, there are um, places with um, even less holidays, but for comparable um, countries in Asia, for Thailand, Korea, and Malaysia, they are doing better than Hong Kong. Since we have a regime for general holidays already, why won't we standardize the numbers of holidays? So that would... Um, achieve greater fairness to everyone. Of course, the business sector would oppose to it. But when we look at the figures, um, we can see that there are different views. We have um, members here representing the business sector. They often talk about um, labor, productivity being affected, etc. And some economists actually um, argue that it would um, raise productivity. And um, Time magazine cited the examples of Germany and Greece. In Greece, the average um, annual working hours is 2017, and um, there are 14 days of holiday. And um, for Germany, the um, annual working hours is only 1,408. And, um, and um, Germany ranks 8th and Greece 24th in terms of the average working hours in the EU. So um, lower um, working hours might lead to higher productivity. And according to a UK survey, 80% of HR specialists agree that increasing holidays can enhance productivity and it can also improve corporate governance and sense of belonging from employees and in turn improvement of business. I'm sure the um, Secretary is aware of the situation and um, in a 2008 survey in Hong Kong um, there was a study on the impacts of holidays on consumption and according to the 2008 survey if um, an extra day of holiday is introduced for each season, 
the annual the um annual per capita consumption will increase by about two hundred dollars or a zero point three four percent GDP increase. The then Secretary for Labor and Welfare, Matthew Chung, said that by um, raising the um, labor holidays by one to five days, um, the co um, co cost for businesses will increase by zero point two to one point two billion dollars. And I wonder if why the Secretary's estimates um, are far cry from other surveys conducted elsewhere. So perhaps the Secretary has ignored the positive economic benefits in increasing the number of holidays. Apart from looking at surveys and statistics, we should consider whether we are um, offering um, comfortable lives to the people. As I said, Hong Kong has among the longest working hours in the world. And we often see tragedies in which um, overworked employees um, would um, pass away um, due to um, strokes or heart attacks, etc. So why would a developed place um, see so many um, deaths from overworked workers? So there should be, um, ideally, in a day, there should be eight hours of rest, eight hours of work or study, and eight hours of entertainment. But um, apparently, this is not achievable in Hong Kong. With more holidays, families will be happier because they can enjoy more family time and at the same time it would benefit our society. Companies would see a greater sense of belonging from its employees and um, as Hong Kong promotes the innovation and technology sector, I'm sure um, fellow LegCo members would understand that we have very long working hours and um, sometimes our brains simply fail to function and we need a break. If you work for more than 10 hours, it places a great strain on our brains and it also leads to health issues and um, at the end, the, all these would become social costs. So hopefully members would support my amendment. So that we can strike a balance between economic development and a more um, humane way of life and hopefully we can mitigate health risks for the people by increasing the number of generally general holidays to 17 or 18 days. Thank you. Dr. Fernando Chang. Madam Deputy, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Pun Xiuping for moving this motion to review our holiday policy. When we talk about holiday policy, we are mainly focusing on paid uh, holidays or leave days. There are two tiers. Uh, we call it the uh, statutory ho holidays and then general holidays. So labor holidays fall on the statutory holidays, but they don't have holidays on general holidays. Well, in, in a 2011 LW study, we have 2.8 .8 million workers 61.6% of the employees were taking uh, bank holidays, i.e. general holidays, and 34.8% were on uh, labor holidays. So close to 40% of the employees have um, 12 days, and 60% have 17 days. So there is a gap, a wide gap. This is unique to Hong Kong. All over the world, now, if the employees in the, in the same employees in the an organization may take different may have different holidays, but in Hong Kong we have the blue colors and the white colors. So what what's the point? 
Does it mean that the close to 40 percent, the frontline workers, they, their work is not so valuable? That's why they have to work more. In actual fact, their income also reflects this. The lower income you have, you work longer hours and you have fewer holidays. Very often, when the government outsourced certain work jobs, um, the workers there are mostly on labor holidays. Well, even for the leave day, one leave day in the seven day work period, they have to go to work because they make very little and they don't have bargaining power. Is this what we call Hong Kong spirit, Hong Kong's uniqueness? We claim ourselves to be an uh, Asian metropolis. We claim ourselves to be advanced and civilized. But in the labor market, while well, we are very wicked, blatantly, why do we have to discriminate against such workers? Maybe we should not be using the concept of workers, but rather employees. But they are uh, working for organizations. Why are there two tiers? There is a wide gap between two groups of workers. And there is different treatment for the employees in the same organization. Large companies, including, for example, bus companies, New World Fast Bus, City Bus, the management uh, personnel have a 17 holidays front line uh, for the bus captains the um the garage workers are on 12 days uh swire the coca cola were managerial or above personnel 17 days and then front line workers 12 days only clean cleansing companies the major outsourced uh contractors iss security companies Gut force, and for other uh, chain groups, the management has 17 days. And for frontline staff, whether it's uh, cleaning workers, the uh, security uh, uh, guards, they are on 12 days. How can that be? My amendment is simple. I'm not against Mr. Poon's motion, and that is to designate the victory day as a statutory holiday or a general holiday. But what I'm focusing on is even more humble. Let's standardize them first. Why do we have to differentiate between 12 and 17 days? It doesn't make sense. When the majority of the workers in Hong Kong are having 17 days, why is it that the uh, grassrooters who are working taking on menial tasks, uh, have fewer holidays. They usually walk longer hours, and they have fewer holidays. So, Secretary, you are from the social uh, service sector, and you teach a social work subject. So what value does it reflect? This is where the unfairness lines. This, such a gap is meaningless. The disadvantaged do not have the basic protection. Well, many members have uh, said that many studies internationally said that these holidays are needed. It's not like the CMA's chairman, Chinese Manufacturing Associations, Mr. Ng, saying that, well, it's, it's better that we should cut the holidays for the white uh, color workers. That goes to show the mindset of the uh, employers. They would rather have zero holiday. We would just work like slaves. And they would try to maximize their profits. Well, that's what happens in a capitalist society. But we should not be just focusing on the market forces. We uphold other values as well. The whole society is not a market in itself. This is the blind spot of the government. It looks only at the market, defends the market, and the employee is interest. Well, what interest are we talking about? According to your own figures, even if an extra, well, even for an extra holiday, the extra uh, salary repayment for the employers is only $370 million. That was the figure in 2011. In five days, then it's $1.85 billion. 
Well, compared to the total wage bill of $500 million, it's just a drop in the bucket, 0.3% uh, or so, 0.3%. So it's a minimal amount. Is it that our companies cannot afford such payment, giving uh, five extra days to the frontline workers? Does it mean that the business will wound up? If the Christ routers have their basic rights back, then that would be good. It's not just a matter about holidays, about basic justice. Why are you discriminating against this group of um, frontline workers? Why do they have to take fewer um, holidays? What is the value behind? What is your rationale behind this policy? The world, um, all over the world, there is no such policy. While well, our paid holidays, according to CNN, while well, among the um, countries in the world, Hong Kong ranks fourth from the bottom in terms of paid leave days. In neighboring countries, Japan, 36 days, we have 26 days only. Now, uh, 14 days of annual leave and plus 12 days of SH, and Japan, 36 days, uh, Taiwan, 28 days, uh, South Korea, 34 days. Um, UK, 5.6 weeks, around 39 days. We just got 26 days. So no comparison, can't be compared. Now, working hours, we are even doing words. Now, there is this a comparison internationally. In terms of work hours, uh, we are doing the poorest. Um, we are one among the 10 poorest uh, countries in the world. Average, we have 50.11 hours. The second is Mexico City. Third is Bombay. You know, um, our economy is so very different from theirs, but we are working an extra six hours on top of the, them. And then for the security force, they usually work 12 hours. Um, hours, that's the norm. And then they would work normally 72 hours per week for those working in the residential care homes for the elderly home, 66 uh, hours a week. This is coming from these government statistics. And transfer sector, 60 hours per week. This is most inhumane. The government should at least make minor adjustments. You have worked on standard working hours for so long. You have dragged um, your feet, and now you are not presenting any proposal. So paid holidays, please try to standardize, make standardization. So you fear the employers, right? So you d dare not do anything. And you hide yourself behind the LAB, uh, saying that they must have a consensus among between the employers and employees before you are willing to work on it. Well, there can never be any action on your part as a result. Now, we, as far as holidays concerned, we are discriminating against the grassroots workers. Secretary for Labor and Welfare. Madam Deputy, I thank Mr. Poon Ping for moving today's motion. I also thank Mr. Um, Jonathan Ho, Mr. Wen, Andrew Wen, and Dr. Fernando Zhang for moving the amendments. All along, the administration has taken into account changes in our society as well as economic development, conduct uh, reviews on uh, labor laws. We have taken into account the benefits of employees as well as the affordability of employers to gradually improve rights and benefits of employees. Given this, prem uh, given this premise, the, uh, the government has been continuously improving um, benefits related to employees. We have at the outset made it very clear that we have the determination to deal with a number of challenging labor issues, including to um, remove the offsetting arrangements under the MPF, as well as to increase maternity leave. And in order for these two measures to be implemented, we have given the undertaking to share the financial burden of employee of employers. 
We have also conducted, uh, taken on some measures to improve uh, health and safety measures of employees, and we will comprehensively review the um, penalty for violations of relevant legislation. In, in relation to those who are less controversial, we will, of course, promote them without uh, sparing any effort. Say, for example, the uh, compulsory reinstatement order, increasing paternity leave, uh, increasing the medical payment made by employers for employees that are injured in the course of their duties, uh, as well as uh, some regular. We have also devoted our efforts uh, in some regular work, say, for example, reviewing of the Steady uh, um, minimum wage. Of course, we will take into account um, relevant factors and try to strike a balance between the interests of uh, employers and employees, as, as well as feasibility and the accumulated financial burden on employers. We'll also conduct objective assessments on societal and economic impact. In relation to Mr. Pun Siu Ping's uh, original motion, it's actually similar to Mr. Ho's um, original motion, as well as uh, two other members' amendment made on the 22nd of March 2018. It's just that um, this is another chance to have a debate on the same thing. Well, I would like to say again that in relation to general holidays and statutory holidays, they are two completely systems in terms of law and in terms of economic uh, impact. In relation to under the employment ordinance, there are 12 days of statutory holidays enjoyed by all employees protected under this ordinance, regardless of their year of uh, year of service as well as the uh, number of hours of work. However, in relation to general holidays, it is uh, made they are made under general public holidays ordinance. Banks, uh, civil servants, uh, those who are working in educational institutions as well as public bodies, don't have to go to work. However, under the general public ordinance, there is no stipulation that employers should let their employees enjoy these uh, general holidays. So it is up to employees and employers uh, to make their own arrangements whether employees enjoy these holidays. That is uh, different from the uh, statutory holidays stipulated under the employment ordinance. For statutory holidays, all employers will have to abide by the relevant regulation. We have to be very careful if we uh, consider any increase of statutory holidays. The original motion of Mr. Pun Siu Ping is to increase one statutory holiday, that is, uh, the victory day of uh, the uh, Chinese People's Wall of Assistance. Well, back in 2015, uh, it was the 70th uh, anniversary of the uh, Victory Day. Uh, a number of uh, commemorative activities and events were, were organized uh, by the central government uh, all over the country. And the 3rd of September 2015 was set as a national holiday. The Hong Kong SAR government has also organized a number of commemorative events, and in order to enable general public to participate and to remember this historical day, um, the government has, through the special holiday 3rd of September 2015 ordinance, set the 3rd of September of 2015 as a general holiday, uh, as well as a statutory holiday. However, there was no relevant uh, corresponding arrangements made uh, thereafter, there are no plans uh, at this moment for us to turn this into a statutory holiday. Amendments of the three members, they ask uh, for the general public holidays to align with the statutory holidays. So they are more aggressive in their amendments. However, they have not conducted any assessments or consultation. We don't think there is any need to change the arrangements of statutory holiday because uh, we, I don't think our society is prepared, but I will listen to members. Thank you. Dr. Shang Shung Tai.
Thank you, Madam Deputy. From what the Secretary for Labor and Welfare just said, I think um, the government would understand why they have been criticized so much nowadays. The um, pro Beijing camp proposes an extra day of statutory holiday, which is the um, Victory Day against Japanese aggression. Let's not talk about the name of that holiday. It should be um, retitled a um, Day of Renaissance for Hong Kong or something to that effect. We are asking for one or two extra days of statutory holidays, and you say that this is a complicated issue that must be carefully considered. But at the same time, you are raising the age threshold for applying CSSA from 60 to 65 years old. So for an extra day of statutory holiday, you you would um, dwell over the issue. But um, overnight, you have raised the age threshold for CSSA applications from 60 to 65 years old. So this is a case of double standards. With another day of statutory holiday, um, would the business sector really lose a lot of money? And the um, and um, Carrie Lam said um, she is over 60 years old and she works over 10 hours a day. So why can't others do the same? So um, there is no ground for comparison. The Secretary did not seek to understand why Mr. Pun Siu Peng moved such motion. The context is that our holiday regime is outdated. Where else would you find two separate regimes of general holidays and statutory holidays? And um, why should we have different regimes for blue collar and white collar workers? We would all consider ourselves um, the middle class, of course, myself excluded. So when we establish our holiday policy, why did we not consider um, shifts and needs of our society? The Secretary said um, the government's policy would be based on the needs of our society. So why don't you consider the fact that your policy is outdated? You are um, distinguishing between the blue collars and white collars. We and um, we have seen the INT bureau set up already. Secretary, this is not about uh, one or two extra days of holiday. It's about the need to review and improve the existing regime. For Mr. Pun Siu Peng's original motion, the, the, um, it provides some food for thought. He wants to designate the Victory Day against Japanese aggression as a statutory holiday. In 1997 and 1998, we had a statutory holiday um, for Victory Day against Japanese aggression. And um, we also had two um, Saturdays at, as holidays. And um, this is this was good news um, for the um, employees because before 1997, there were two um, holidays designated um, to celebrate Renaissance. And after, 97, after 1997, there were two extra days as well. The, the, the decision to not regularize the, the holiday might be politically motivated. The nature of holidays is to improve lives. So um, as our society becomes more affluent, why do we have such long hours? The um, number of paid days um, ranks fourth to bottom in the world. Apart from the pragmatic value of holidays, um, holidays carry a symbolic meaning. Why do we have holidays? You might consider 
holidays sacred or days that are worth respecting. So holidays are not just a time for people to take a break. It might carry certain values or significance. I'm a bit doubtful whether we should make the Victory Day of the Chinese People's War of Resistance Against Japanese Expression as a holiday. If we call it a day of renaissance, I would be more supportive. Apart from their pragmatic value and significance, um, well, I think we should um, designate at least 20 days of statutory holiday. The, um, the day after Mother's Day should be made a holiday. There is just no debate. Have you considered the fact that Mother's Day and Father's Day are even more, ex more significant days? You might say that the um, Victory Day um, is of national significance, but um, family is at, at the core of our values. So this starts with our mother and fathers. So if there is no um, holiday for uh, Mother's Day and Father's Day, why would the Victory Day be made a statutory holiday? I think we should rebuild our very core family values for Hong Kong people. You might say that without country, there's no family. But in my opinion, without families, there is no point talking about the country. Dr. An Chang. Madam Deputy, Dr. Chang Chong Tai said um, Mother's Day and Father's Day should be made holidays. So I think um, Children's Day should also be a holiday. They should not have to, um, children should not have to go to school. So whenever we talk about holidays, um, there is always a big debate. So for days um, of significance, they should be made holidays. So I would support Mr. Pun Siu Ping's motion to designate the Victory Day of the Chinese People's War of Resistance Against Japanese Aggression as a statutory holiday. For three years and eight months, um, we were subject to Japanese occupation, and it was a um, dark point in our history. The um, DAB members, including Dr. Zwith Quad, hoped that um, Hong Kong would introduce a um, war resistance museum. Um, we had um, a number of um, um, women who suffered, and a number of people were um, sent to Guangdong province, and they also um, suffered. So we should educate our young generation of what the um, war of resistance was about. And um, the secretary said in 2015, there was a day of holiday. So it was one off in nature. So what was the point of making that day a holiday um, in that year? And he talked about, he mentioned the 17th um, anniversary of the Victory Day, and um, the government hoped that more people would know about this part of history and that the um, young generation would not, sup would not um, forget this part of history for the Chinese people. So um, Mr. Pun Siu Ping proposed designating the Victory Day as a statutory holiday so that schools can run activities. So I'm supportive of this motion. Mr. Jonathan Ho and Mr. Andrew Wong talked about standardizing the numbers of holidays. I think this is also um, worth considering. Years ago, 
the DAB has mentioned this idea through our district work. We saw many cases in which um, um, either the father or mother would have to work on a general holiday and um, in the 19th century, the This, there was the so-called 1871 um, Bank Holidays Act in the UK, and um, the idea was that banks were working very hard, and um, some employees were given a break so that they can enjoy um, days off. So it was the right idea. The um, laborers at that time um, had an even more difficult life. So why did, didn't the government um, standardize the numbers of holidays? The laborers did not enjoy the, um, the holidays. Um, at that time, many workers were paid on a daily basis. So if um, they were given holidays, they would not be paid. So at that time, the workers were unwilling to be given holidays, so that's that's why the government um, did not designate them um, those days as statutory holidays. Hong Kong's used to have more than two million factory workers, and um, nowadays we have far fewer. So uh, manufacturing makes up less than 1% of Hong Kong's GDP now. So should we consider standardizing the numbers of holidays? Because times have changed. Some journalists um, told us that um, they would only enjoy statutory holidays, and on other days they still have to work. So this is something at least um, worth studying. Our government um, economic advisor said that um, if we increase the number of statutory holidays by one day, the um, cost is some. Um, Three hundred and seventy million dollars, or one point eight billion dollars, over five days. On holidays, um, families would go out and spend. So this might actually um, stimulate um, businesses, especially catering. So employers might not necessarily lose out; they might welcome the idea. So. Um, the government has um, set up paternity leave and increased from um, increased it from three days to five. So why can't the government go one further? At least you should promise to look into it. So I hope the secretary can explore the idea so that Hong Kong people can enjoy more holidays together with their families. Thank you, <coughs> Mr. Tommy Chan, Madam Deputy. I've heard what other members said. I don't want the secretary to say that, Mr. Tommy Zhang, you have already said the same thing. Uh, so I will not be reading from some old script. Well, some fellow members said that the secretary is being callous. They use that term very often and easily. So it seems that they're striving for holidays for the grassrooters, for those who make uh, ten million or twenty million dollars. They are enjoying holidays as well, so that benefits them as well. Some other members also said that uh, well, if an extra holiday is given to the workers, then the workers' productivity will rise, and that goes just better for the business sector as a whole. Now, if they don't get paid on the holiday, they don't 
um, they will not come to my restaurant. So what about my employees? Do I grant them leave? So there is so much to say about this subject matter. I've been in the council for over a decade. I've heard too much of such remarks. People would like to be generous on their be on other people's behalf and then accusing other people of being callous. Now, if you want to um, have a holiday on De uh, Father's Day and Mother's Day, well, try to start with your own office, giving them, giving the holidays to your uh, employees first. Maybe you can shut up your, uh, shut down your office and and then grant them the holidays. You are being generous on other people's behalf. Well, why don't you do it? I welcome that. Now, well, as time passes, the society has different views on um, holidays. As pointed out by fellow members, in 1997, the Provisional Legislative Council passed a legislation to designate the liberation, uh, to cancel the Liberation Day holiday, the 30th of August, and then the second, set the third Monday as a general holiday for the Victory Day. And in 2015, then the, there are other amendments. The uh, Labor Day and the, uh, the birthday of the Buddha have replaced uh, some older holidays. In 2015, the 27th of February, the MPCSC in the fourth um, session at the Central People's Hall decided after resolution that the Victory Day should be designated as a statutory holiday for the Chinese people, and that is on the 3rd of September. And after that, the government uh, submitted the 2015 sub 3rd of September Victory Day Bill and set this as a one-off special holiday, and that was passed as well. The Liberal Party understands that the Victory Day has historical significance. That cannot be uh, denied. But the Liberal Party uh, back then uh, objected to the bill because the government had not fully consulted the business sector beforehand and it uh, disregarded the financial implications of the business sector. And likewise, the Liberal Party in relation to the motion to designate the Victory Day of the Chinese People's War of Resistance against Japanese aggression as a statutory holiday it doesn't have um, any special view. But there is one principle, and that is for this statutory well, the total number of statutory holidays should be uh, kept at 12. If we can give up on one statutory holiday and replace it with the Victory Day, the Liberal Party will not oppose it. That will not add to the burden of the business sector and at the same time try to deepen the new generation's uh, knowledge of this Victory Day. We can enhance our national pride and boost a sense of national identity. That would be a win-win situation. If you ask me, Tommy Jung, now, as to which holiday should be abolished to be replaced by Victory Day, that's simple. I think the um, Labor Day on 1st of May uh, should be replaced because for the Labor Day, it's a, a day for the labor. But for the employers of the micro and SMEs, they still have to work. So let's uh, change that date to the Victory Day then. But then we still respect the uh, various uh, sectors' views, and we welcome suggestions. And the Liberal Party's stance has always been very clear. We will not easily increase the number of uh, statutory holidays, adding extra burden to the business sector and undermine our edge. Now, the greatest problem we face is manpower shortage. If we have one more holiday, then, well, we that will make our business more difficult. And as for labor-intensive industries, the implications are even more for far more far-reaching, including the catering um, industry. So we must uh, resolve issues in relation to logistics and other issues. Now, while well, on statutory holidays, we do not compare ourselves badly um, against our neighbors. People were saying that we uh, rank fourth from the bottom. If you look at Singapore, Australia, the Philippines, Malaysia, they also have 12 statutory holidays. We're just a, a little bit uh, lacking behind at Thailand. They have 13 statutory holidays, one more day than Hong Kong. Now, for uh, those on a continuous contract, they can enjoy 12 days of statutory holidays. They can also uh, enjoy rest days and paid annual leave. And that will also increase um, 
uh, with the the length of service ranging from seven to fourteen days, or in all, the I think we are uh, uh, com comparable to our neighbors in terms of our statutory holiday um, benefit. Now, in given the manpower shortage and our difficult uh, business environment, I, Liberal Party doesn't see a need to increase uh, the number of SH or to standardize GH and SH ISO speak. Mr. Yu Wing, Madam Deputy, well, we should remember history. China has been uh, suffering from the uh, Japanese aggression in our history, and uh, we, the Chinese people fought a very hard war, and we fought against the won over the Japanese uh, aggression. In 1941, the Japanese invaded China, and Hong Kong has experienced the um, uh, suffered for three years and uh, eight months, and we will not forget that. In 2011, the State Council announced that uh, the 3rd of December, September, should be designated a holiday on the same year, the electrical and also uh, passed the bill to give a one-off holiday to remember uh, the our victory day against Japanese aggression. This goes to show that this day carries historical significance. If it is to be designated a statutory holiday, we have to be more careful, though. Madam Deputy, from the perspective of the public, one extra holiday should be something good. We can have a one more rest day. We can stay, spend the day with the family. From the tourism perspective, uh, one more holiday means that the grad, uh, the workers can use their holiday, uh, plan for um, a holiday, and that can help with the tourism industry. But as legislators, we should take uh, objective and comprehensive view of things. We should analyze objectively. The its implications. Some members have been suggesting standardizing GH and SH. Uh, should there be more pros or more cons? Now, when the government reviews holiday policies, it should also review whether the present mechanism is appropriate. And after the holidays has, has been increased, what will be the impact on the various se sectors in the economy as a whole um, before it proposes any adjustment? The secretary has been clear. Uh, on the government's stance just now. Well, our holiday policy originated from the 60s under the British rule, and it has been all along being practiced. We have the GH and the SH. That's because the bank ho holidays, well, that was called back then. We now call it general holidays. They do not benefit the blue-collar workers, and the society found that unfair to pacify the society. So we have drawn up the statutory holidays, labor holidays. According to the Labor Department's information, compared to neighboring economic entities with uh, statutory holidays, uh, Thailand has 13 days. And then we have uh, Hong Kong falling behind at 12 days. Well, for China, Singapore, they have uh, 12, 11 days of holidays. They just have one system, and it's uh, fewer than Hong Kong. That goes to show that Hong Kong's holidays, um, I mean, we are not lagging behind our neighbors in terms of holiday policy. Now, Hong Kong is a service-oriented economy. Uh, services take up over 90% of the GDP, according to the 2015 paper submitted by the government to the electrical, an increase of one statutory holiday, assuming that employers will employ relief workers the overall wage bill will uh, increase by $370 million, taking into account infl inflation and rate rental labor cost um, rise. The figure will uh, rise high, higher. The service industry will bear the brunt. Uh, retail, hotel catering will be most affected. According to the CNS department's information, these three sectors employ 630,000 people, and they are basically the grassroots workers. And for any change in labor holiday policy, as um, raised in the original motion and amendments, these will um, bring great impact to this labor-intensive sectors. The latest unemployment rate is 2.8 percent, close to flu employment. Many sectors have said that it is difficult to hire people. At the uh, particularly micro and SMEs enterprises, uh, they do not offer benefits as mu as much as the large enterprises. Labor importation is one way to resolve labor 
uh, shortage. But, in, but whenever that is raised, the labor sector and the legislators will oppose it. The government dares not proceed with it. In the long term, if this persists, the labor shortage in the labor market uh, will not be resolved for a long time. Since it's difficult to hire workers, if somebody wants to take leave, the microenterprises and SMEs will f also find it difficult to uh, hire relief workers. Even if you pay higher, a uh, higher wage, you will not be able to recruit. Pending the government's um, imposing policies, drawing up policies to resolve manpower shortage, uh, increasing the statutory holidays will n harm the SMEs. It will only undermine Hong Kong's competitiveness in the region. In the long run, um, only big conglomerates will monopolize the different sectors and the workers will ultimately suffer. While well, labor rights have been improved in recent years, including in the middle of this uh, month, there will be an extension of the paternity leave to five days, uh, statutory maternity leave 14 uh, will be extended to 14 weeks, and then the legislation will proceed with the um, cancelling the offsetting mechanism under MPF. In face of the economic uncertainties, I hope the government will not um, impose harsher measures on the SMEs. It must strike a balance between the employers and employees' interest in making a decision. I oppose the original motion and the amendments. Dr. K. Kwok, Madam Deputy, I speak in support of Mr. Poon Siu Peng's original motion and all um, amendments from other members. The um, the World um, Economic Organization pointed out in a recent report that Hong Kong's competitiveness ranked seventh or down one place compared with the previous year. And the most shocking part was that Hong Kong scored zero in labor rights. Hong Kong has the longest working hours in the world and has the fourth um, least number of holidays in the world. While the business sector promotes productivity, the price is the um, private family time of our employees. So on this basis, I would support the motion and I hope the government would listen and increase the number of labor holidays. Hong Kong has two holiday regimes, including statutory holidays or white collar holidays or general holidays or the so called blue collar holidays. All these has led to an imbalance in our society in that the um, Grassroots workers could only enjoy 12 days in statutory holidays. So for a so-called fair and progressive society, why do we have two sets of holidays? This is just not justifiable. So this um, motion came at the right time and it would urge the government to consolidate the general holidays and statutory holidays so that for grassroots workers and other employees, they should enjoy the same number of holidays. And um, I acknowledge the victory day of the Chinese People's War of Resistance against Japanese aggression, but I'd like to share some facts. While we commend the Victory Day, 
let's not forget that the People's Republic of China has voiced different views towards the、um, Sino-Japanese War, and、um, when the former Premier Zhou Enlai signed the、um, PLC Japan Declaration, there was a shocking truth, and that was for to.、Um, Facilitate the、uh, friendship between China and Japanese. China withdrew its request to claim compensation from Japan. It was shocking at that time because、um, during Japanese aggression, there were substantial lives claimed and economic losses. And the losses amounted to 120 billion U.S. dollars of direct losses, and 500 billion dollars of indirect losses. Unfortunately, in the 1972 joint declaration between China and Japan,、um, such requests for compensation disappeared, and the former leader Mao Zedong thanked. Japan openly six times for the aggression, and in 1965,、um, Mao told a Japanese general that with the war,、um, it the, the war helped to unite the Chinese people. And in 1960, when、um, Mao met a leftist、um, Japanese. Writer, and、um, in 1964, Mao participated in the、um, second、um, Asian Economic Forum. He mentioned the same to a Japanese official, thanking Japan for invading China. So when we look at the history of the People's Republic of China. Um, well, nowadays China does not tolerate independence, but in 1931, when、um, Japan、um, instigated the、um, 18th of September incident, and at Guangxi, the、um, a, a Soviet Union was formed, and、um, there were two、um, Chinas. One is the、um, Soviet Republic of China, and also the Republic of China. So when the、um, National Party and Communists、um, sided to fight Japanese invasion, and、um, but only ten percent of the military capacity was utilized to fight Japanese invasion. So you can see. That the rise of the Chinese Communist Party was built partly upon Japanese invasion of China. So when we、um, examine the Victory Day against Japanese aggression, I have、um, mixed feelings. While we vent our anger towards the Japanese, the、um, so-called Patriotic Party often sided with them. Your time is up. Mr. Wilson, all. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Today marks the、um, 80th anniversary of the outbreak of World War II. It was apparently a very long time ago. Without the、um, bravery, then、um, China would not be as strong as it is today, and Hong Kong cannot enjoy its current prosperity. Unfortunately, Hong Kong was also、um, subject to World War II. I'm sure a lot of our older generation would remember what happened then. Fortunately, today、um, we are at a peaceful era, and、um, despite the painful history lesson,、um, it should not become a burden but a, a lesson. At Hong Kong, we should respect our own history. Every year, President Xi Jinping and 
members of the um, Chinese Politburo would attend the um, events on the 3rd of September every year. And on that day, there would be official um, events inviting LegCo members and other VIPs. Apart from commemorative activities, Hong Kong should um, go one step further. In 2015, the previous term, government answered the call of the State Council to pass a one-off legislation to designate the 3rd of September as a special holiday. The then Secretary for Labor and Welfare, Matthew Chung, acknowledged the significance of the Victory Day to LegCo and the public. I hope members and um, Mr. Matthew Chung would um, designate the Victory Day against Japanese expression as a statutory holiday to show its significance. By designating the Victory Day as statutory holiday, we can enhance our um, sense of belonging and the promotion of the Chinese history subject would allow our students to know about the motherland and that the destination of holiday would allow the public to know more about the Jap the war of resistance against Japanese aggression and know about the history of our country and Hong Kong. So um, apart from official events, um, by designating the day as statutory holiday, more um, relevant events would be encouraged. The de designation would allow the public to commemorate the Victory Day and also allow our employees to enjoy a day of break. If the um, bill is passed at its third reading, all employees can enjoy the holiday. And um, as mentioned in the amendments proposed by Mr. Jonathan Ho and Andrew Wan, many employees do not enjoy paid general holidays. Hong Kong practices a market economy and the market enjoys a lot of freedom, but I'm sure members would agree that we should not ignore the rights of employees in balancing business interests and the interests of employees. Stand, we should standardize general holidays and statutory holidays and amend um, the employment ordinance. Some people might be wary that this can increase the cost for businesses, especially SMEs. By gradually um, combining or aligning the general holidays with statutory holidays, we can share the fruits of labor with employees. And Hong Kong's unemployment rate remains low. Many industries face a shortage of labor, especially um, the services industries. For the um, frontline workers or the blue collars, if they can enjoy more holidays, they would be um, encouraged to join um, or to take up frontline jobs and solve the current shortage. There's a difference of five days between general holidays and statutory holidays with negotiations between employees and employers. Um, the gap can be gradually narrowed. The DAB feels that um, we do not have to standardize both sets of holidays in one go because it would impose um, great financial burden on companies, especially SMEs. But we understand um, concerns from the business sector. If the um, number of holidays is increased by five days, with the rising costs, if um, SMEs are affected, our employees would also be jeopardized. We should balance the interest between employers and employees 
that would be a long term answer. In a gist, we should gradually standardize or align general holidays with statutory holidays. And um, this should be on the agenda of the Labor Advisory Board with a view to striking consensus from both sides. I'm happy to offer my views and support. Madam Deputy, as such, I support Mr. Poon Siu Ping's original motion as well as the motions as amended by Mr. Jonathan Ho and Mr. Andrew Wan. Thank you. Mr. Vincent Chang. Madam Deputy, first I would like to thank Mr. Poon Siu Ping for moving this motion on reviewing the holiday policy. I noticed that the Secretary said at the outset that for the two requests made by members, i.e. designating the Victory Day as a statutory holiday and standardizing uh, the general holidays and statutory holidays, uh, he already said no, and we are very disappointed. We have a lot of discussion on these two requests in the community, and we hope that that can be done. Now, the word wordings um, are brief, but then the meaning is significant in this motion. The original motion uh, referred to the Victory Day in 1945. Um, it said that the Chinese people have fought bravely against the Japanese aggression. Uh, for myself and Debbie and I, the 3rd of September, it should be a, mem a day to be com um, remem remembered by the Chinese people. And then in Hong Kong, we have a, a uh, uh, fewer than 4 million workers, but we have two systems of holidays. This is totally undesirable. I'll talk more about this later. Madam Deputy, about the victory day of the Chinese People's War of Resistance Against Japanese Aggression is meaning. The war, well, at that time, the China was weak and we, uh, was we were invaded by the different nations and countries. And this is a disgraceful period, and we all remember that. For this generation, we are very lucky. We don't experience war. But as to how the Japanese used uh, wicked means to treat the Chinese people, I have read about them in TV documentaries and books, and I have fresh memory. Now, after 14 years, the Chinese people have um, strengthened themselves, and it went against a Jap Japanese aggression. And as part of the ally alliance, the Ch China has taken part in formulating or st st setting up the Na uh, United Nations. And this uh, history is important part of our um, memory. We should remember the Victory Day and the and how it brings a, a power of unity among us. That should be remembered. In 2015, the 17th anniversary of the Victory Day, the CPG would like to commemorate this special day and announce that that day should be made a holiday. And the SAR government also said a one-off statutory holiday that day. So in the community and also in the council, we are all agree to that. That goes to show that we all agree to the meaningful, um, the, to the meaning of this Victory Day. So I support the proposal to designate it as a statutory holiday, and the government should organize a lot of activities like um, educational activities, building a museum for uh, to tie in with a statutory holiday so that the new generation will understand the history of this uh, day. Schools can also hold various ceremonies so that a lot more people will remember this day. Madam Deputy, then another subject matter on holidays. Well, workers always ask, aspire for holidays. There are now two holiday systems in Hong Kong, including general holidays and statutory holidays. The white collars have the ba uh, bank holidays, and the blue collars enjoy labor holidays. There are two different treatments here. Now, in the past, uh, Hong Kong's economy was dominated by manufacturing, and workers were paid on a daily basis. So if they don't work, they don't get paid. The economy was not that good, so uh, people had to make a living rather in a difficult way. So we they don't they didn't um, take leave casually for bank holidays, and the clerical workers, those in the banks, will take the bank holidays. 
So there is a sort of class distinction in these two systems. Now, time, times have changed. The industrial development has advanced, and it's difficult to differentiate between blue colors and white colors, and there is no uh, class distinction here. So if we continue to have two holiday systems, is not in line with the reality, and it also creates unfairness. In fact, well, for the calendar we use, uh, we have a 17 general holidays and Sundays marked. Very seldom we don't we see a distinction between G H and S H. It goes to show that members of the public uh, have that kind of mindset. So we should standardize the G H and S H to 17 days. We have 1.4 million people who are on labor holidays. They come from catering, cleansing, and security sectors. So the employers may bear the brunt, and if there is an additional five holidays, SMEs will suffer. Now, the, in 2011, the Economist has said that uh, one extra holiday will mean $370 million. In five days, $1.8 billion. Are they suffering that much? Let's look at it another way. People uh, will not stay in their homes while on holidays. They will uh, spend. Um, so that will stimulate the retail and catering industry's development. And if employees get more holidays, then that will help uh, boost their morale, raise their productivity, and then enhance their stability in the job. So it's difficult to quantify the benefits. Now, to understanding, this subject matter has to do with employers and employees' interest. The ALB is still uh, studying it. There is no consensus. But I think, well, a tr we, we should head towards gen uh, standardizing general holidays and statutory holidays. Well, the government can take a gradual approach in order not to have a great impact, too great an impact on the employers. Lastly, I am the uh, chairperson of the Manpower uh, Group of the DAB. I would like to say that we support the original motion and the amendments moved by Jonathan Ho and Andrew Wan as to Dr. John's uh, motion, which deletes the mentioning of the Victory Day. We don't think it's appropriate, so we will abstain, abstain from uh, voting on that. So I speak. Mr. Raymond Chan. On Mr. Poon Xiaoping's original motion, it would like to extend what's done in 2015. CY Leung then designated one of um, the holiday on the 3rd of September 2015 as a holiday. Now, when we resume second reading debate on the 9th of July 2015, I said this. Well, even if it's just one off for one day, I support it. A uh, special holiday f on the third of December, September, because we work too long hours and we have too few holidays. But we don't support and agree that the SAR government, following or modeling after the CCP, for designating this day because it is Victory Day. Well, I still maintain the same stance today. Let me emphasize, even if the government supports this motion, and that is designating the victory day of the Chinese People's War of Resistance against Japanese aggression as a statutory holiday on the 3rd of September, this holiday must be an extra one. And this should be enjoyed by both the blue collar and white collar workers. And it should not replace any existing uh, statutory holiday. Well, government works l like this all the time. Well, if you have strong views, let me first cancel an existing holiday and then replace it with this Victory Day holiday. I believe that those who move the motion or move amendments would not like to see that happen. Because after all, during the um, resistance against Japanese aggression, whether it's the white colors and blue colors, well, they were affected in the Sino-Japanese War. So if we want to designate a holiday based on this, then it should be right that everybody can enjoy it. Now, when we discuss this new additional or additional holiday, we have to look carefully at the historical meaning of this day why this Victory Day is set on the 3rd of September. 
and not the 15th of August when the uh, Japanese government announced uh, the um, end of the war. Because in 1945, on the 2nd of September, at the uh, U.S. warship, the Japanese um, signed the an agreement. And for those who witnessed, uh, included uh, Chinese representatives, the PRC's representatives, a representative from fr Britain, France, New Zealand, the Netherlands, and so on. And even um, so, uh, the Soviet USSR was included. And the 3rd of September was designated as the Victory Day. Now, after 1955, the military as a uh, festival also re remembered this. And the PRC starting from 2014 regularized to this commemorative day. When we looked at this Victory Day again, we will find that the present Chinese government, are they really respecting history in commemorating the um, Victory Day? The Chinese government has in recent years emphasized this Victory Day and they have staged a lot of dramas and um, compiled school um, teaching materials to talk about this in incident. And they are playing down the uh, ROC's uh, role in this war. And they have downplayed the role of the US in the war. And they have emphasized the CCP's um, role in this war against the Japanese. If you look at the, the dramas they stage, you will, you will find that if not for the effort of the CCP, the Japanese will not surrender. And in 2015, the Chinese government uh, had a big celebration, including President Xi, um, uh, function. And they didn't mention anything about the ROC's effort, and they don't they mention about the British and the U.S. role in this. In 2015, the government submitted a paper to us. It says that in 2015 is the 17th anniversary of the Victory Day, and the CPG will host a large number of major activities all over the a country and the 3rd of September will be designated a holiday and the SAR government will also host a number of uh, celebration activities so that people can remember this uh, particular juncture of the history. Now if we would like to remember history, we must respect history uh, in an objective way. Uh, we should learn about the um, history about China against Japanese invasion. We should stick to the truth, and in our um, teacher materials, we should describe the war uh, in an accurate way. Now, which contributed most to the war, and which party made the sacri greatest sacrifice? And apart from learning about the Chinese fighting against the Japanese, we should also learn the Pacific War, which really had to do with the Japanese defeat. We should understand how the, Jap uh, the US and British armies have um, tried to fight against the Japanese and, we, that had, and how the surrender agreement was signed. Many parties and many countries have played an important ro role now, if we really respect history in looking at the Victory Day and who are the heroes in the war, we can, we can then ensure that the Victory Day will not be used by some governments to um, brag and boast about themselves. And then, if we on only if we do that, can we then designate the Victory Day as a statutory holiday so that our next generation can reflect upon the lessons learned from history and then we can also uh, build a new peaceful world. Ms. Elizabeth Quart, I speak to support Mr. Pun Xiuping's original motion to designate um, the Victory Day of um,
the uh, wall of re resistance against Japanese aggression as a statutory holiday. We remember um, the Japanese occupation, and that was the Nanjing massacre. Tens of millions of people were killed, and there are numerous women that have been raped and uh, forced to become um, comfort women. On the 8th of October, Hong Kong was under invasion. After three years and eight months, uh, we have seen number of families being torn away, and there has been a huge reduction of a population in Hong Kong. Over a hundred thousand people have been transported to the concentration camp uh, to be subject of. Um, bacterial experiment, and it is reported that none of them survived. A professor in South China Polytechnic, starting from 1993, conducted studies on this period of time. He has published uh, two, made two publications. One is about the Nanjing massacre. The other one is uh, uh, Roswell in the East. Auschwitz in the east. Hong Kong people have formed forces to fight against the Japanese aggression. We have the East River Brigade, and there is uh, the family of seven in Chateau Cock. They are the laws, and they have all joined the army to fight against Japanese invasion. They have formed the first civilian army to participate in the fight against Japanese aggression. They have mobilized a lot of people, and they have participated in a lot of uh, guerrilla wars, and they have sacrificed themselves. I think for this piece of history, it's unknown to a lot of Hong Kong people. There are still a lot of uh, heroic stories of Hong Kong people. Hong Kong people, especially the younger generations, don't know about these un unsung heroes. They may not even know about uh, this uh, tragic history of our country. They don't even know about the um, atrocities committed in a war. I hope that Hong Kong people will not forget about um, this history. Well, uh, previously there was uh, uh, Sixtus Leung as well as uh, Yao Wei Ching. They have insulted our motherland to designate the 3rd of September as the Victory Day. Is one of the ways to show that Hong Kong society attaches importance to uh, this, uh, to the history, and there should be commemorative museums being set up. There should be enhanced education, public education, um, and uh, publicity about this piece of history. I have previously had discussions asking for uh, standing exhibitions in our uh, Museum of History dedicated uh, to the War of uh, Resistance. More resources should be devoted to collate materials related to this period of time. A lot of veterans told me that um, their fellow comrades have been dying off. They still have a lot of memorabilia as well as their um, recollections of this important time in history. If they are not preserved, they will be lost. We are aware that a large group of dedicated people have been doing a lot of work to try to preserve the uh, prisoners' camp on the mainland, and they would also like to uh, include this part of uh, history, a tragic section 
of our history to uh, into the uh, Museum of History. We want to designate a uh, solitary holiday and we want museums. It is not because we try to instigate hostile feelings or that we are hostile towards Japan. It's just that we have to make sure that we will bear this uh, in mind uh, so that we will never forget about the atrocities of uh, the war. I have been to Auschwitz. I have. I remember there is a work, uh, there is a plaque saying that if we don't learn from history, history will repeat itself. I do believe that uh, it is um, a common value that we should love peace and uh, stay away from war. I support Mr. Poon's original motion so that we have a chance to learn about. Um, this history once again here. I hope my fellow Hong Kongers will remember what happened and learn from history. Thank you. Mr. Kenneth Lung. Madam Deputy, first of all, I, th I would like to thank Mr. Poon for moving the motion. The um, gist of his motion is to ask the government to review the holiday policy and to designate the Victory Day as a statutory holiday. There are three members who moved amendments, namely Mr. Jonathan Ho, Mr. Andrew Wen, and Dr. Fernanda Jung. Before I comment on the motions and amendments, I would like to give you some figures. I have read about some figures about uh, public holidays all over the world. Well, there is only one type of holidays. They are public holidays set by different governments. Well, Cambodia has 28 days. I'll only select uh, countries that you are familiar. Sri Lanka, 25. India, 21. Philipp the Philippines, 18. And Hong Kong, 17 public holidays. Compared to well, we are one of the um, places with the highest number of public holidays. Let's turn our eye to European Union or Europe. The one with the most public holidays is Finland, 15 days, Spain, 14 days. Well, I've given you the uh, back the objective information, so you. Do agree that where well, we have more holidays than the U.S. and uh, the U.K. But the second point I'd like to make is that we may have more public holidays. Ironically, for elementary workers and employees in general, in terms of Working hours, according to different polls and surveys, stand a longest, if not uh, if not one off, in the all in the world. So, statutory holidays allow our employees uh, to have some rest. But is it really true? Not really, I don't think. If we don't uh, step up the penalty for violations under employment ordinance, a lot of employers would try to chance it. They would make alternative arrangements in a way that these statutory holidays are not taken by employees. If you want to add more labor holidays, does it really help employees? Not necessarily. We have a lot of holidays, objectively speaking. I rarely see eye to eye to Mr. Tommy Joe, but if we look at the uh, figures, we have a lot more. Uh, public holidays than a lot of other places. So if an employer 
make、uh, arrangements with the employee to ask the employee to not take the statutory holiday. What can be done? Very often, employees would just succumb to such request and get the payment in lieu. But you do know that even if you get paid in lieu, it doesn't compensate the、uh, holiday that you could have spent with your family. The second leg of this motion. It's something about、uh, the difference between general holidays, which is seventeen, and statutory holidays, which is twelve days, because of some historical reasons. A lot of members have already covered this. Back in the seventies and eighties, there were a lot of manufacturing operations in Hong Kong. Where employees, because of financial reasons, that、uh, they would like, they don't want too many holidays when they are not paid, and that is a different treatment from white collar workers, and in fact, it's an insult to blue collar workers. Aligning general holidays with the statutory holidays should be done. It can be done by phases. There is a necessity for it to be done and done by phases. Now I turn back to the victory day. In 2015,、uh, our country appealed to us that it should be a holiday. It was the 70th anniversary, so it was made a holiday. I did not oppose to that, and I voted for it. Well, if you say that there will be another holiday in in the 80th anniversary, 90th, or a centenary, if I live to see it, I would absolutely support the Hong Kong SAR government to designate that as a, a holiday. I so speak. Miss Rebecca Chan, thank you, Madam Deputy. First of all, I'd like to thank Mr. Pun Siu Peng. For moving the motion on reviewing the holiday policy, the idea of having public holidays is to allow employees to have a break and to、um, remember some important days, so that our future generation can learn about our history and our culture. As for the significance and historical context of the Victory Day against Japanese aggression, I won't repeat them because some other members have already told us about it. I would support Mr. Pun Siu Peng's motion, as well as the motions as amended by other members, because、um, these would urge the government to seriously review our holiday policy and standardizing. The two sets of holidays, so that employees can enjoy equal、um, statutory holidays. Workers in Hong Kong have a very busy life already, and、um, with no standard working hours in sight, holidays are times they can relax and spend some time with their families. Currently, the two sets of holidays have brought a lot of inconvenience to the grassroots workers, especially women. Some grassroots women have the ability to work, but、um, very often they are forced to only、um, enjoy statutory holidays. A lot of、um, schools and childcare centers. Would not operate on general holidays, while the grassroots women have to work. And、um, the children of these women 
do not have to go to school, but yet um, they have to work so who can take care of their children. And um, Hong Kong is a le leading world city, but um, yet we have two sets of holidays, and this is um, a form of discrimination against certain workers. This is something that should not continue. We only have 12 days of statutory holidays, whereas the um, general holidays or bank holidays amount to 17 days per year. Hong Kong's number of statutory holidays every year ranked fifth to bottom among 103 regions on average. Um, the number of statutory holidays per year is 30. So um, for holidays alone, Hong Kong is falling far behind other regions. Many members representing the labor sector as well as some labor groups are fighting for standard working hours and a review of minimum statutory wage. In Hong Kong, we have seen the introduction of um, different labor benefits, but yet um, this is not an easy process. We are just seeking to standardize the number of general and statutory holidays at 17 days. The holidays are in place. It's just about standardizing them. We should not discriminate certain people. And I hope that um, this would be met with less resistance. So it's about whether the government has a commitment to standardize general holidays and statutory holidays. The government might say that many SMEs are subject to pressure. This is something we realize. We do not um, expect standardization overnight so long as you have the um, determination and commitment. This is just a very humble request from the labor sector. For the benefit of 2 million odd employees in Hong Kong, I urge the government to standardize the number of holidays per year at 17, and the number of holidays should increase so that Hong Kong people can strike a balance between work and family life. And in turn, they would have more time to um, study and upgrade themselves. Secretary, even if you cannot implement it, can you at least promise to review the policy and give us a timeline? In terms of discussions with the business sector, I believe we can um, narrow the differences. With more holidays, um, they can better recharge and um, work harder for their employers. So apart from increasing the number of holidays, the two current sets of holidays should be aligned. Thank you. Mr. Ted Ho. Hong Kong currently has 17 national holidays, and as per our Labor Department, only 12 are considered statutory holiday. This means while some workers enjoy 17 free days to relax and commemorate the holidays, Others need to show up at work and have their usual long shifts without salary or leave compensation. With an average of 14 days annual leave, depending on the years of service, topped with the statutory holidays, we are still lagging behind other global cities. As per World Economic Forum, the UK enjoys a total of 37 days from 28 paid days, off topped with nine public holidays. Denmark has 34 days, Portugal, Portugal has 38, and Sweden even has 41 days in total. In addition to our less holidays, 
Hong Kong has the reputation and enjoys the title of the city that never sleeps. This might be an advantage to our obviously income generating and booming industry, attracting more and more tourists and investors, bringing in innovative business ideas and opportunities. But what does this imply about our working hours and limited statutory holidays vis-a-vis work-life balance. As much as we could boast that this is one of the most lively and fast-paced cities in the world, we should acknowledge that we also have the highest ranking of sleep-deprived workers. Generally speaking, the standard working hours is 40 to 44 hours per week. But over half of the Hong Kong's workers do more than 44 hours a week. According to a survey by Swiss investment bank UBS conducted in 2016, Hong Kong employ employees usually work 50 hours per week. In the same year, the government reported that around 32,000 workers, excluding foreign domestic workers, put in 75 hours on more per week. Hong Kong actually ranked number one for having the longest working week out of 71 cities. It seems no one could escape this working culture, not even expatriates. In a female expat satisfaction survey concluded in 2016 by Internations, an expat networking website, Hong Kong ranked 53rd out of 191 countries or jurisdictions in the work-life balance category. This is not only alarming in the aspect of Hong Kong's work-life balance, but it also says a lot about our city's attractiveness as a place to live in. So isn't it another clear implication on Hong Kong's declining international reputation? It is very important to note that there is no maximum working hour set by law. And what is more dreading, overtime pay is also not protected or guaranteed by law. So needless to say, our workers do not have enough days to rest. More, most describe themselves as overworked. It is a fact that Hong Kong is a hardworking society. It is already embedded in our culture, and it is something to be proud of. But everything has a limit, including what our mind and our body could realistically offer. Different countries in Europe are already experimenting and implementing shorter work weeks. Recently in Germany, metal workers have won the right to a 28-hour working week. In New Zealand, a uh, company experimented a four days uh, work week for two months, which was successful enough for the management to consider making this change permanent. This shorter work week may still be something far from what Hong Kong could currently implement, but it could be something to look into. After all, we proudly say that we are a world city, innovative, able to cater to the emerging demands of the modern world, then why shouldn't we do it for our own people? We were successful in extending the statutory paternity leave for Hong Kong fathers from three to five days. It is something I believe could extend more in the future, giving more importance and priority to a higher quality of life, not only in terms of monetary, but most especially in terms of personal and family life. I support that the victory day of the Chinese People's War of Resistance against Japanese aggression should be a statutory holiday since this would lessen the disparity between the number of general and statutory holidays. This is just. We should maintain fairness and give high dignity to our labor. But I also further urge that the rest of the national holidays, Good Fridays, the day following Good Friday, Easter Monday, the day following Buddha's birthday, and the first weekday after Christmas Day, to be part of the statutory holiday list. If we are proposing and highlighting the 
commemoration of the Victory Day of the Chinese People's War of Resistance Against Japanese Aggression, why don't we highlight the value of the equally important holidays as well? I did not see a particular reason to single out this holiday. As much as the government wants to promote and maintain a highly competitive business environment for Hong Kong, it should seriously start prioritizing the well-being and rights of employees to ensure that we are able to offer and maintain high standard of productivity, efficiency, and quality. So Mr. Leung, I hereby speak in support of the motion and all the amendments. Thank you. Mr. Ao Nokhin, this motion is about reviewing the holiday policy. First and foremost, in the speeches made, uh, we, it seems that we have a common consensus, and that is the white colors have 17 days and the blue colors have 12 days. This uh, disparity in treatment should be stopped. And understand that the uh, various amendments are dealing with such disparity. And I support doing away with this uh, disparity. Uh, you are a worker and then you will have different holidays based on the job that you are in. Now we uh, cite some figures on the number of holidays for workers and whether they are sufficient. Well, let's look at whether these uh, figures are reasonable. Some uh, legislators from the business sector has quoted figures from an annex of a electrical paper, and that is on the holidays uh, provided by Hong Kong and the neighboring cities, and the number of uh, holidays. And it's 12 and 17 days are listed. But let's not forget, for a worker in Hong Kong, the annual leave he is entitled to is, is how many? Seven days. I have uh, done some comparisons myself. We rank fourth from the bottom uh, in that regard, and we are on a par, say, with Singapore, Brunei, and Taiwan. They all have seven days. But what about the other countries? How do they deal with annual leave days? Some can go as high as uh, 20 days in Switzerland, Ireland, Netherlands, 20 days, Finland, 25 days. I'm not suggesting that we should model after them. Uh, different countries have their own uh, different backgrounds. Uh, Mr. Lang is uh, smiling. But you can't say that workers are enjoying a lot of holidays already. Mr. Tommy Jung said, yes, well, you can replace the labor day holiday with a victory day. Well, don't be so miserly. Seven days only here in Hong Kong. Are holidays enough? Now, we ha arrive at different results by comparing ourselves with different countries. Well, 12 days are too few, and we don't support the disparity in the system. Another issue that I would like to say something about is whether we should designate the Victory Day as a statutory holiday. Let's talk about history. When I um, looked at the motion and the amendments, I carefully considered moving an amendment myself, and I even uh, the well the office colleagues even uh, considered moving amendment to the effect that say the uh, fasting day of the in the of the islams should also be designated a holiday and then we go went even wilder in our thoughts we can say that say festivals of the taoist uh, belief could also be designated a holiday but then my colleagues said in the end well this was too wild let's not do that so ultimately uh, i didn't proceed with that and what I want to say is that in relation to holidays, 
uh, should we be designating the victory day of the Chinese People's War of Resistance Against Japanese uh, Aggression as a statutory holiday? I mean, is a day so significant that we should have a holiday? Well, Victory Day is an important juncture in Chinese history, and we must have a holiday. But then, should we use the terms like victory of our war of resistance against the aggression? In Southeast Asian nations, we always talk about uh, putting aside hatred among the nations. We should promote peaceful development. And that's why, in the past few years, a lot of historians, especially for those in China, Korea, and Japan, they would like to come up with uh, the same historical account. Um, starting 2005 to 2010, they have released An, uh, articles on contemporary history, uh, which was arrived at by the three nations. And we um, put aside certain particular incidents in drawing up that historical record. So they share a common aim uh, that we should not lightly promote nationalism, because it will bring bad consequences. The Second World War told people, and we have learned a an important lesson is um, nationalism will bring disastrous consequences, and hatred among nations will also uh, bring dire consequences to humankind. So given this is a background, uh, when we thought about the wordings to be used, we should maybe consider also the end of the Second World War and so on. How should we describe? This matter, um, there is room for discussion. If we emphasize too much nationalism and so on, I would not uh, support it. But if we um, put in wordings from the perspective of a peaceful relationship, understanding, mutual understanding among nations, then I would accept it. Maybe the wordings can be changed here. I think. Um, it is subject to further thoughts in terms of labor uh, rights. We do have a common consensus here. But as to the wordings for that day, should we be using words like um, victory against the Japanese aggression? So I uh, submit. Mr. Leung Chi Chang, thank you, President. Uh, well, some other members were ha were having a hard time in citing the figures to legislators. We don't have any concept of holidays because at holidays we go to the districts to do work. So we don't have um, the, the, the 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 concept of a holiday. It's just natural that uh, we cite the figures with such a difficulty because we all forget how many holidays we have. Now we must also study. Um, the disparity in statutory holidays, um, and Mr. Pun Xiuping, leading to Mr. Pun Xiuping's motion to review the holiday policy. Now, different sectors have different uh, holidays, so that's why there is a need to conduct a review. Of course, uh, we should look at whether 12 days are enough. For clerical uh, staff, they have 17 days. So, what? How many days should be considered as reasonable? I also listened carefully to Mr. Tommy Jiang's speech. Well, if you want to grant holidays, then you should lead by examples yourself. Maybe the legislators themselves are not very humane to their colleagues. You will not grant them so many holidays. And I think he um, he comes with good reason. If you are an employer, will you be sharing the same stance as this is? Now, I must clarify, I will not be like that. If the public thinks that um, a certain number of holidays is reasonable, I will abide by the common wishes. Well, um, if a worker has to do the best job, he needs enough rest. So I think that's a, co a consensus among the legislators. But the question is, how many days are considered appropriate and reasonable? So that is subject to dispute. Now, t some countries have 25 days. And for our own country, it's just 11 days. 
and for the, ne uh, the next city is 15 days. So it's difficult for you to review it because we can never be sure whether 12 days are enough or it's, um, 17 days are preferred. It's a difficult subject to conduct a review on. Since for some sectors in Hong Kong, they are having 17, and for the some other workers, they have 12. So indeed, there is a need to review the holiday policy. So I would support that review. Mr. Pun Xiaoping also asked for uh, an extra day that is bringing the total to 13. And he he said that it should be the victory day of the Chinese People's War of Resistance Against Japanese Aggression, i.e. the 3rd of September. So we are just um, towing the country's policy. The government may say that we have an open mind and we can discuss uh, which days it should be designated as a statutory holiday. For myself, I will support designating this particular day because this day is indeed a day to be remembered by the future generation of the Chinese nation because 74 day years ago, uh, this was a juncture in history which should not be forgotten. So if we designate this day as a statutory holiday, then we all remember that this is a day to be uh, commemorated upon. And then we can also revisit what happened back then. Uh, Mr. Aunok Hin um, talked about different interpretations of history. But for my understanding, well, uh, every Chinese person should remember this part of our history. We um, and meaning that we should cherish peace. We must remember the suffering of people in a war, and all people were in agony. If we can remember that part of history, then we will cherish our peaceful days, and then we will all work towards um, the goal of creating a peaceful world. Well, there was some uh, Japanese militarism uh, back then, and some countries were also uh, implementing some of the um, policies. Um, they were using economic means to suppress other nations, and people were also su are also suffering. Likewise, so let's remember this part of history, and this is um, important for our development over history. I would like to recommend this book to those uh, tuning into the de debate live on TV. This is a diary from a famous person, and it chronicled the period between uh, 1943 and 1944, and that was an important incident happening in Hong Kong. Uh, citizens of Hong Kong who saved some uh, U.S. pilots. No, not many people knew about this part of history. Recently, the, the descendants of these uh, citizens and those in the district, um, well, the descendants of those who were helping out uh, with the rescue operation produced this book. And it talks about how these U.S. pilots were saved. And one of the most famous um, pilots was uh, saved or rescued. And this uh, history shows how people were contributing to the war to fight against the invaders, and especially for those indigenous villages in the new territories. Um, this it, part of history is very important. So let's re all remember history. Uh, so that we can have uh, peace in the world. I so submit. Yeah. Uh, During holidays are 17 days, whereas 
Sedgary Holidays is just a 12. Over 1.36 million uh, employees enjoy 17 days. There are people who fight to align these two sets of systems um, to 17 days. However, the business sector may shift the additional burden onto the public. The two different sides have um, insisted on their views. There is so far no consensus. I do think that uh, each side should try to understand the other. We find from experience that when it comes to controversial issues, that more often than not, in the end, we can forge consensus. Well, this is a problem left to us by history. It was back in. It started back in the 1960s. We've always used the system of the mechanism of the Labour Advisory Board. We hope that uh, we can ask the board to to help us and come up with. A solution. The administration can make use of a short term relief measures. I've always advocated work life balance. I hope that um, employees can also have time to enjoy their lives, say, for example, stagger working hours or special uh, leave. In 2017, I made the suggestion um, to the administration to set up a work life balance fund to be. Uh, for the for money to be injected by the administration to support employees to take a special leave, the merit of this suggestion is that it can be done immediately because the fund will be paid by the administration. In twenty fifteen, there was a study done. Well, for um. 980,000 people, they enjoy um, statutory holiday if there is an additional holiday given to us and the cost will be $370 million per day. If the government pay this, pay this, pays this amount, then uh, well, 980,000 employees will be able to enjoy an additional holiday. I think that uh, the total cost will be just about $2.5 billion, benefiting a hundred. Uh, Benefiting one million employees and hundreds of thousands of families to have a better life. I do think that is uh, value for money. And if you think five days is too long, then maybe just give them one or two days. This is only a preliminary suggestion. I think the administration should at least look into it. In the long run, employees and employers should show sincerity to try to resolve this issue. The administration should um, provide some kind of subsidy to enable smooth transition. I so submit. Mr. Michael Look. Thank you. First of all, I thank Mr. Pun Xiuping for moving this motion. It has uh, carries with it a lot of meanings. He asks the victory day to, des uh, to be designated as a statutory holiday. If it is a holiday, it means that you will be able to get away from work and have a day of rest. On the other hand, this is uh, a day where there is an educational and historical value. The victory day is a very important day in history. Chinese people or a citizen of the world whether it is a um, victory against a Japanese aggression or fascism, I think that this day is meaningful. I oppose to some members trying to t uh, gain political mileage when it comes to issues like that. Dr. Kwakaki took things out of context. He took the words of our state leaders out of context. And if Dr. Kwakaki understand uh, the art of um, words of Chinese people, then I will have something to say to you. Dr. Kwok, I thank you for giving us something to laugh about. And I also thank Dr. Um, Kwok for his uh, innocence 
about history to show us that it is important to know your history. Dr. Chang Chung Tai talked about um, the um, war against a Japanese aggression, saying that saying as if it's no it's not related to Hong Kong people. I'm glad that he no longer teaches in a university. Why is it not related to Hong Kong? Because Hong Kong is part of China. Hong Kong people are also Chinese. So how is it not related to Hong Kong? We have the East River Brigade. A lot of scholars left Hong Kong to go to the mainland to try to avoid the war. In 2018, there was um, the a best film. It was uh, directed by An Hui. And there is um, a, there are a lot of um, voluntary soldiers and also British soldiers um, fighting for us. So we do have to remember history. We're not here today to talk about um, the merits and demerits uh, who ha have made the most uh, contribution towards the victory. We are Chinese. We have to remember our history. If you forget, you have betrayed history. We don't try to fan uh, hatred, but we can't forget the price paid by uh, 30 million uh, people and um, a war of resistance over 14 years to fight for our freedom. Chinese people love peace. We have to remember history. We have to cherish peace. We have to oppose to war. It's not like what Mr. Aunokin said, that commemorating the um, war of resistance against a Japanese aggression is uh, blind support. Aunokin doesn't want to think uh, from the perspective of Chinese people. He wants uh, to take um, China, Chinese out of everything. The war of resistance against J Japanese aggression is a righteous war. Aunokin can't tell right from wrong. We have to bear that in mind. I find it strange that Dr. Fernando Jung would move such an amendment. It puzzles me. Dr. Jung is a not um, a separatist, but why would he take away the part that relates to Victory Day? Does he think that Chinese people should not commemorate this day? It beats me. We have one country, two system, but there should not be two holiday systems. We are employees. We have about 850,000 employees enjoying less than five holidays, uh, enjoying five less holidays. It's not about blue, being blue collar, white collar. They're the same. Well, different employees enjoy statutory holidays, including reporters outside. They enjoy 12 days of sedentary holidays only. We are an advanced economy. How can the government uh, face the international arena? If you look at sedentary holidays on the face of it, it doesn't seem too few. However, we have very few annual leave. On top of that, According to a report of uh, uh, UBS, well, we Hong Kong people work the longest uh, in the world. Well, if you don't want to do anything about uh, standard working hours, what about adding additional holidays? There are no difficulties when it comes to legislation. 
and employers should think that when people have holidays, they would go to spend. And there are many different ways to raise productivity. You can't just benefit from exploitation. You do need to allow employees to share the fruit of economic development to have a good life and uh, work-life balance. I so submit. Thank you. Mr. Shukachan. Thank you, President. President, I'd like to thank Mr. Pun Xiuping for his motion on reviewing the holiday policy, and I support the motion. The main reason is that I hope to tackle the um, issue of overworking through this motion. With another day of holiday, if this can um, ease the problem of overworking, I would certainly support the motion. Hong Kong has very long working hours. More than um, 300,000 workers work without compensation. 600,000 workers work more than 60 hours per week. Our labor um, rights are far lower than many countries. When we look at recruitment ads from the Labor Department, many companies are still only offering seven days of um, statutory holiday. And of 103 countries and regions, Hong Kong's number of statutory holidays ranked fourth from bottom. And on average, um, countries have 30 days on average. So for employees, an extra day of holiday is certainly good news. So we have to, t we must talk about marks when we talk about um, holidays. And um, in 1844, Marx um, described holidays in this manner. He said um, employees would feel like animals when they work. I think this was the um, greatest criticism towards capitalism by Karl Marx. And I think this is a more significant issue than a poverty gap. And nearly 200 years later, the situation still hasn't improved. Many people would suffer during work and they would um, enjoy their life to the fullest after work. And in weekends, many people would simply sleep. And um, this provides some respite for them. And during the Karl Marx era, um, the Industrial Revolution started in the UK. Many workers work more than 14 hours per day. And um, Hong Kong entered a post-industrial era, heavily focused on the services, but, it, uh, but the um, nature of capitalism has not changed. We have seen a lot less injuries and deaths in work, but um, we saw very long working hours. Many workers um, contract chronic illnesses, and the unfortunate workers would have to face very long treatments. As well as um, uncertainties in uh, compensation. And um, nowadays, many workers have to sell their health for work. And um, the um, it's just that the nature has gone from injuries and deaths to chronic illnesses. I hope this motion can help um, ease the problem of overworking. I support the motion as amended by Dr. Fernando Chang by designating the five days of general holidays as statutory holidays. Hong Kong faces a gap in um, holidays enjoyed by workers, according to the Census and Statistics Department. And um, many um, workers are only on statutory holiday. They cannot enjoy general holidays. And um, this consists of 30% of all employees. These are grassroots workers. And I feel that Dr. Fernando Chang's motion can help ease this gap. 
many companies are discriminating in terms of offering holidays. Office and bank staff can enjoy 17 days of um, general holidays, while frontline blue collars only enjoy 12 um, days. These include Hong Kong, Disneyland, um, Swire beverages, um, etc. And um, the discrimination exists according to the study. For the lesser the holidays, the longer the working hours. Um, for those on general holidays, they only need to work 5.3 hours per day, while those on century holidays work on average 5.9 hours per day. So um, per se, the rich is getting richer. And um, by introducing five extra days of statutory holidays, the additional cost to businesses would be $1.83 billion. But um, the um, additional cost would only be 0.3% 0 0 of the total labor costs. And um, the government assumed that the um, workers would be fully um, replaced during the statutory holidays, so the actual cost would be uh, far lower or 0.1% of the total operating costs, and this can um, benefit a lot of employees. In 2016, and um, the Federation of Hong Kong uh, em Employers um, talked about um, standardizing the general holidays and statutory holidays, and the Federation was not against some um, raising the um, number of statutory holidays and bring them in line with general holidays. The gap of five days between general and statutory holidays is discriminatory towards the grassroots. Um, the rise in cost for businesses is extremely limited, and introducing five, day, five more days of holidays is a family-friendly policy, and this would only benefit employers. So I support standardizing the gen general holidays and statutory holidays so that grassroots workers would no longer be um, prejudiced. Mr. Wong Teng Kuang. Thank you, President. I support Mr. Pun Xiuping's motion to designate the victory day of the Chinese People's War of Resistance Against Japanese Aggression as a statutory holiday in the 1930s to 40s. Japan instigated the Pacific War to invade China. The um, Japanese soldiers um, brought harm to our nation. We cannot forget this part of history. We cannot forget the price paid by our people in fighting the invasion. And um, during the 18-year resistance, Hong Kong was subject to three years and eight months of occupation. So for the um, painful um, yet memorable victory, I believe that there is, there is historical significance and it should be a lesson learned. We cannot allow our younger generation to forget our um, fights during that time. So I do feel that um, the destination of the Victory Day has a um, present-day significance and not just a historical one. Regrettably, um, some members completely um, ignore the concept of nation and there is little um, affection to our nation, while other members have simply missed the point.
the purpose of Mr. Poon's motion is not to um, deal with the disparity between the number of general holidays and that of statutory holidays. Of course, we can debate on another occasion um, the number of general holidays and statutory holidays, but this is not the intent of the motion. Some members discuss the um, economic side of the issue, and um, for example, the additional costs um, arising from the additional holiday. I think in the in the historical and present day context of the issue, um, we should not be so stingy. So I would support Mr. Poon's original motion and the motions as amended by Mr. Jonathan Ho and Mr. Andrew Wan, but um. I feel surprised towards the motion as amended by Dr. Fernando Chang. Does any other member wish to speak? The Honorable Poon Xiuping, you may now speak on the amendments. The time limit is five minutes. President, first I would like to thank those who have spoken during this debate. I'd like to take this opportunity to express my thanks to Mr. Jonathan Hao from FDU, and Mr. Andrew Wang from the Democratic Party, and Mr. Fernando Zhang from the Labour Party. I would like to express my views on the amendments. The FTU and the DP's amendments, uh, amendments are in line with the Labour sector's view. And in my begin, uh, opening speech, I have uh, talked about why the amendments, their amendments have not Im incorporated in my original motion. I won't repeat them now. So I fully support Mr. Jonathan Ho from FTU and Andrew Wang of DP's amendments. As for Dr. Fernando Zhang's uh, amendment, he's from the Labour Party. I've carefully listened to Mr. Zhang's speech, and I don't understand why Mr. Dr. Zhang has deleted Victory Day. I support Mr. Dr. Zhang's proposal of uh, standardizing general holidays and statutory holidays, but then Dr. Zhang has uh, deleted the main part of my original motion, so I have reservation on his amendment. Now, last but not least, I would like to thank once again those who have spoken on the motion and appeal to members' support to my original motion and also the amendment made by Mr. Jonathan Ho of FTU and the amendment made by Mr. Andrew Wang of the Democratic Party. So I submit. Secretary for Labour and Welfare. Once again, President, I thank Mr. Poon Siu Ping's original for moving the motion as well as the three members for moving amendments. The administration and the government attaches importance to different uh, festive days, be them um, originating from traditions, history, or religion, in relation to whether a certain um, day should be designated as a sanitary holiday. We have to take into account the overall um, benefits of uh, to our society, including employing employee benefits as well as uh, affordability of enterprises. Just like what members have said, I learned that um, they have different concerns. I'm sure you all agree that employees and employers are interdependent. They, they are working partners. We have over 98% of employers being SMEs. There are also families employing over 380,000 foreign domestic helpers. So when it comes to holiday policies, their affordability should be taken into account. The government has always taken into account socioeconomic development, um, interest of employees, as well as affordability of employers, review labor laws, and gradually improve benefits and protection to employees. In relation to statutory holidays, currently uh, there are 12 days, and it's uh, reached after a wide consultation as well as cons uh, when consensus has been forged. 
Apart from statutory holidays, we have also uh, made arrangements and amendments uh, to the operations of uh, different of the uh, statutory holidays. Say, for example, uh, the first, second, and third year of the Chinese New Year, as well as um, as well as uh, the um, sec the day after the Mid Autumn Festival. If it, they fall on a Sunday, then the fourth day of the Chinese New Year, as well as the day, the second day after Mid Autumn Festival, will become an alternative holiday. Well, I am aware that members have making comparisons between oranges and apples. Some of them have compare um, general holidays with salutary holidays of overseas countries, or the other way around. Yeah, we will have to bear that in mind. Mr. Yu C. Wing has said that has uh, said something about the information about our situation. I would like to say that uh, well, um, we have twelve statutory holidays, just like Malaysia and the Philippines, uh, Thailand. There are thirteen days. Singapore, New Zealand, eleven days. Australia for most of the areas ten to thirteen days, Macau ten days, Taiwan for factory workers nine days, non factory workers twelve days, Korea, South Korea and Jap and Japan there are general holidays. However, well um there are only f first there's only the first of May that is a paid uh, statutory holiday in Japan. There are no relevant provisions. So in short, in Japan, there are no statutory holidays. So if you want to make comparisons, please compare compare the lights with the lights. There are quite there are a lot of um statutory holidays in Hong Kong. As I said at the outset, it's just like I said on the twenty second of March twenty eighteen to Mr Jonathan Ho's motion as well as um relevant amendments. This term of government would like to deal with a number of uh, challenging e issues, say for example, the offsetting arrangements, the extension of maternity leave, and how to uh, enhance occupational safety, as well as enhancement of penalty for, uh, for contraventions, as well as an incre increase of paternity leave. We have to accord priority. We have to take into account the overall affordability of our society. The issues I've just outlined are quite controversial, and they carry with them a significant impact to our society and our economy. Mr. Chan Kim Po has assessed something he has said before. In short, it is for the government to foot the bill and pay the uh, difference, uh, pay the additional cost for the five days. Regarding the demolition, uh, the re regarding um, the cancellation of the offsetting arrangement, well, there involves uh, some transitional arrangements. It is the duty of the government to help employers. To tie them over. Regarding maternity leave, the additional four weeks are paid by the government because we want to reduce unfair treatment uh, of to women when they have pater maternity leave. But the government can't pay all bills. You must understand that. Government fund came from comes from taxpayers' money. We will continue to listen to employers, employees, and relevant stakeholders when it comes to employment policies. We'll try to forge consensus. At the same time, we will make use of publicity and promotion to encourage employers to adopt um, better human resources management. Taking into account this their situation and affordability by offering um, better treatment than those stated in the employment ordinance. I now call upon Mr. Jonathan Ho to move an amendment. 
President, I move that Mr. Pun Siu Peng's motion be amended. I propose the question to you that the amendment moved by Mr. Ho Kai Ming be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favor please raise your hands? Those against please raise your hands. I think the question, Mrs. Regina Yip. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. Members have already been informed that as Mr. Jonathan Ho's amendment has been passed, Ms. Andrew Wan and Dr. Fernando Chang have withdrawn their amendments. Mr. Pun Siu Peng, you still have 7 minutes and 12 seconds to reply, then the debate will come to a close. Mr. Pun Siu Peng. I thank the um, 20 odd members for speaking on a motion, but I'm disappointed towards the secretary. He failed to explain the reasons for not designating the Victory Day as statutory holiday, and he refused to review the holiday regime. And um, the in 2011, the Labor um, Department conducted a study on holidays to understand the um, utilization of general holiday and statutory holiday and um, the daily cost for introducing a straight day of holidays $370 million only. And I hope the government can reinforce labor rights by introducing a new holiday. I would not use up my time slot because I am sure that members would um, understand the contents of my motion. I now put a question to you that the motion moved by Mr. Pun Siu Peng as amended by Mr. Jonathan Ho be passed. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the motion as amended passed. Debate on motion with no legislative effect since Mr. Alvin Young is absent. I would not deal with his motion. Council is adjourned till 10.30 a.m. tomorrow. At 10.30 a.m. tomorrow, there will be the um, CE question and answer session.